Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Okay, get on in here. You are now in the den. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet, honey. Well, this is my review recap for Atlanta, right? We are at season four, episode three, and this is Born to Die. Now, it says, I am tired of these old heads hating, okay? Just let me listen to my Italian drill music and blue eye trap in peace. Y'all can listen to D'Angelo or whatever. And let me tell you, I will take D'Angelo any day, okay? This episode was kind of nostalgic. It was funny because I just was having this conversation earlier today when my son's friend was asking me, you know this person, you know that person. It's like some of the names are familiar to me. Some I'm just not interested in. Some songs I know, some I don't. And I was just saying I really don't listen to a lot of the new stuff. Of course, there are a few exceptions to the rule, right? But for the most part, you could give me old school any day, any time. And yes, I will take D'Angelo or whatever, all right? I like old school hip hop, old school reggae, old school um, R&B. That's what it is. Everything old school. Okay. Reggaeton, whatever. Mix it up. Okay. But less about me and more about this episode, y'all. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into this. So we started out this episode with Paperboy getting off the stage. He just finished performing. And this guy's going real hard saying, you know, how do you do that? Right. Um, and Paperboy is kind of like, what, you know, uh, perform rap like what are you talking about? And he's like, no, I mean everything, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you do your performance, the way your, you know, your facial expressions, the whole deal. How do you do it? And he's like, you know, people actually think it's real. And Paperboy is kind of like, listen, I still don't know what the heck you talking about. And he's trying to walk away. You know, the guy's steadily walking behind him and he's telling him, you know, I really wish that you could go ahead and teach my son some things. OK, he can learn a thing or two from you if you could work with him, take some time and spend with him. And Paperboy's like, listen, I ain't got no time. My schedule is booked up. I won't be able to do it. But he's not trying to take no for an answer. He keep asking and asking and asking. So Paperboy eventually was like, yo, hit my manager up, okay? See what he says. See if we can fit something in the schedule. But I seriously doubt it because I am booked and busy, all right? But honey, all of a sudden, homeboy was like, you know, I'll pay you a million dollars. And Paperboy stopped in his tracks, okay, as he should, as I think we all would. Like, wait, you going to pay me a million dollars just to go and be with your son? I might have to think about that a little something, something, right? And so, basically, you know, we then have, you know, um, Al with, I'm sorry, we then have Earn, right? He's in this meeting, right? He's with this advertisement agency where they are showing that this client they have basically just got caught on camera, okay, pointing this gun at this young boy that was doing a delivery to her house. And right now they need to do damage control, right? They need to revamp everything and, you know, try to find a way to spend this. You know, she is somebody that is the author of this book. And basically, they're like, you know, she's the top of the priority. She's their most important client. And we don't need, you know what I'm saying, um, this to be going back. And so, of course, they say that this is the white lady that was pulled out a gun on a fundraising team. And they say, you know, she just had this book that's basically been soaring and climbing and making mad money and doing great, right? And the name of the book was I Was Wrong. Now, we don't know what she was wrong about. But, um, you know, one of the people say, wow, I just recently read that book. OK, and so they are just trying to, you know, think of what they can do to give her this revamp because this is a New York Times bestseller. OK, and Earn is over it. OK, he's over it before they could even get into it because this kid is now suing her. And of course, this is making the sales for the book dip. And so they're saying, you know, how can we make this go away fast? And, you know, they over here talking about some, oh, well, you know, say he had a check and pass, say that it's been crime data that shows that this is a dangerous neighborhood. So this is probably why she would want to defend herself, donate to his football team. OK, this is the things that people are talking about. And Earn is like, please, can I get out of here? You know, and you hear the boss like saying, what are you saying over there? And he was like, I mean, can we go? And look up some other people, some new people to sign. And he was like, no, everybody, you know what I'm saying? That we want to be signed is signed or whatever, right? And 
he's just trying to do anything to weasel his way out of this deal so he told him unless you can go wrangle up prestige or d'angelo then no i wouldn't say that there's anything you can do and earn over here talking about well i think i could probably get d'angelo now we hear a chuckle okay come over the room because i guess they all have tried to get d'angelo at one time or another and they don't think that he's going to be able to do it but at this point earn just wants to get the heck up out that room he don't want to be in there with them okay trying to figure out how to get this daggone lady off and i cannot you know blame him and so you see him texting asking do you still do d'angelo's hair and trying to get the information so we're to go track him down now in the meantime paperboy shows up at the studio and you know they in the middle of doing this whatever the heck they was doing child don't even get me to lie you know it's one kid in the booth that basically has a big cowboy hat on and the other kid is in the chair and paperboy is telling him like i'm paperboy and he's like the rapper okay and so this guy in the chair benny okay is telling him like okay yeah and what are you doing here what do you want what are you looking for you know he's acting like he don't know paperboy right and the other guy that was in the booth, which ends up being Yodel Kid, he's saying, I do remember you. I remember you when I was younger. Now, mind you, they ain't that damn old to begin with. So I said, how much younger was you? And then the guy, Benny, had the nerve to say, oh, you're the one my kid, my dad bought, right? And so Paperboy looking like, yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying? Watch what you saying over there, honey, and watch who you talking to. And so they saying, well, how can we help you? And he's like, no, actually, I'm here to help y'all. You know, your dad sent me here. He says, nah, you ain't got to break no sweat. You know, sit down, relax, make your money easy. Just go over there and have a seat. My dad just, you know, be extra sometimes. Don't pay him no mind. So this is basically free money for you. Now, paper boy looked like he a little frustrated, okay? But at the end of the day, if all you got to do is sit there for a minute and make a million dollars, then that shouldn't be too hard, you know? In the meantime, he looking around the studio with some pregnant chick sitting there staring at him and he just like yeah okay what's up now we have this other young kid come in they saying that he's little rick right and he about to get in the studio and he's saying how he gonna have all these different flows and this guy comes walking in with him and Paperboy is about to introduce himself to him. But he was like, I know who you are already, okay? Like, of course I know who you are. You ain't got to tell me. And he says his name is Bunk. And then Paperboy is telling him, I know you. I like your music, dog, okay? You be putting it in. So Bunk asked him, like, do you want to stay in here with these youngins? Or do you want to go ahead in the other studio and kick it with the grown folks, okay? And so Paperboy was like, yeah, I'm down. Let's get the heck up out of here. So they go to Studio 3. To go ahead and chill and have a little bit of a conversation. So now while they in there smoking or whatever, you know, Bunk is putting him on to the fact that there's other ways to make money, right? Now, the guy in the studio, this little boy that walked in, he in here talking about some ricking and rocking. I said, what is this? What is this? Okay. So he was like, you know, nobody got time for that. Now, they basically are talking about the fact that that's not real music. They don't know what's going on. And so, you know, Paperboy lets him know, like, listen, I got a cool, you know, million for this or whatever. And then I'm able to dip out. And he was like, that's all you got? He was like, nah, you should be making 10. Okay, Paperboy thought he was doing big things by getting a million. But Bunk is like, nah, you could get way more than that to have to sit around and deal with this foolishness. So Paperboy like, oh, really? Okay good to know for future reference and so he's telling him because paperboy was like yeah but i stack my money you know i invest in a lot of things i'm saving in a lot of things and stuff like that and he was like that's all cool but that's not making money okay there's more to it than that you know bunk is telling him stonks and bonds that's cool that's with dentists or whatever right when you living in damn castlewood and you know with your wife but for somebody that is single and is in the hip-hop world all right we got to go about it other ways, you know, saving money is not the way of making money. And so he says he got a real way of making money and he gets together with some of the fellas to talk about it because, you know, Paperboy over here talking about the touring and all this. He said, yeah, that's still not going to cut it. OK, you got to look, you know, bigger and further than that. So he tells him, why don't you go ahead and join us at this group? I'm telling you about we are going to be getting together tomorrow night. Come through. So, of course, Paperboy thinking about it like, all right, I might have to, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and check y'all out and see what y'all talking about. Now, in the meantime, you know, we have Earn show up to where this D'Angelo <laughs> is supposed to be, right? Now, all he sees is, 
you know, this brick wall, nothing else there. There's God sitting in this chair and, you know, it's like a bucket on the side and it's like a mat, something like the mat that he had rolled up that he was using when he went to therapy that's on the floor. That's it. He's asking about D'Angelo. The God doesn't answer him. So he takes off his, you know, bag that he had. He takes off his jacket. He sits down. He's getting himself comfortable on the mat. He's seeing that it looks like somebody done drew some stick figures on the wall. You know, he's looking at the floor. The floor look like the mat is covering up some blood. He like, well, what the heck was going on up in here? What was y'all doing? What was going down? Okay. He looking up at the guy. The guy don't say nothing. He just looking back at him. So I'm like, oh, Lord, here we come, you know, about to be some mess. And so, you know, you just basically have um, paper boys show up to this meeting or whatever. Right. And this guy comes in talking and he's saying, like, you know, if y'all here, I'm only going to say this one time. If y'all serious about it and y'all really in here, then that means that y'all care about your future. But if y'all sitting up in here and y'all thinking that this is about rap, it's not about rap. So you could get the heck up and go. If that's all that you are caring about, you can leave the premises right now because we are talking about bigger and better things than rap. You know, Paperboy looking around. So he says rap ain't meant to be the one thing to bring you money or whatever. If that's the case, then I would already be a millionaire. You know, he says you got to look into bigger things. So he tells Bunk to go ahead and put on the slide. So he was like, guess which one of the people in this slide is a billionaire or got billboard charts and all of that in the streaming globally. You know, he said it's simple. He was like, you got two optics that you got to basically look at, right? And we know that optics is everything. And he says with his system, they could basically, you know, branch off and become big and they could be, you know, living in a black ass raft, right? So one of the other guys stands up and they basically like, you know, showing on this board that they got, okay, YWA equals Grammys. So... Paper boy looking and he's saying, uh, what are you talking about? What the heck is a YWA man? So he says, good, wait, I'm going to show you right now. And YWA basically means young white avatar. And paper boy is like, uh, so you talking about some Yu-Gi-Oh shit, <laughs> you know? And he's like, yeah, exactly. He was like, you try to catch them. And, you know, a pokey man, I should say, right? And he was like, yeah, that's exactly right. So he was like, man, I can make an album that's better than these kids. I could win Grammys. I could go on tour again or whatever. So he says, yeah, but your next album is not selling as good as your last album. Nobody wants to hear you. You are old. And Paperboy like, now I know you damn bugging, okay? I ain't no damn old. He was like, y'all yeah, ain't here tripping. You know, the rest of them start laughing too. So they say, yeah, show them the slide. You think we trick, you know, tripping? Show them what's going on. Show them the stages. So they say the first one is Young Street and they basically show Chief Keith. And they saying, you know, that's it, OG. You know what I'm saying? Then the next slide was basically saying, you know, you go to OG. That's when you finally start doing family films. And he was like, the next slide you know, it has Mr. Babysitter or whatever, right? Cusp of OG. So he says, the next thing you know, you basically will be Ice Cube's best friend. And um, <laughs> are we there yet? Five in less than a year. Yo, that had me cracking up. I ain't gonna lie. So Braper Boy talking about this is bullshit, man. That's bullshit. He said, I still could sit out in the arena. I could go on a tour. They say, yeah, but what's bigger than arena? What's your next step after that? If arena is supposed to be the biggest thing, then what's it going to be? A soccer stadium? They was like, you know, it basically starts to go down. So they said, let me ask you a question. When you was in the studio with those kids yesterday or whatever the case may be, right? Did any of them even know who you were? And he's thinking about it for a minute because remember, they really didn't. They wasn't paying him no mind. And only the Yodo kids said that he could remember him from when he was younger. And he ain't that damn old now, okay? So he basically was saying that, it's all about the blue bloods now, right? And that, you know, you got to make room for them and take over for them, basically become managers for them, right? And that is where the money is at. The money is not in you trying to get out there and be rapping no more, right? That's one aspect of it that you can do, but it got to be more than that. It got to become a lifestyle and that you can get this accomplished within a couple of months, right? Where you still could be remembered. And so this is definitely giving Paperboy a whole different aspect and to think about because 
because in his eyes, you know, he ain't thinking about it in that way. So now he's going over to the school or whatever the case may be. And he see Mr. Yoda boy. Okay. Yoda man, whatever. Standing out here all drunk and messed up. Trying to call himself rapping to some girl. He go up to him and he's basically, you know, saying, do you remember me? He like, yeah, I remember you. So he was like, you know, where's Benny at? I wanted to talk with him for a minute. And he's like, I'm not even too sure. He was like, do you even remember who Benny is? Okay. He's so messed up that child. He think he know, but he not even sure. So then he does see Benny and he walks up to him and he's like, yo, I was wondering, you know what I mean? I could become your manager or whatever, right? And Benny's like, oh man, I'm sorry. I wish you would have asked me earlier, okay? Bunk already became my manager. He's a real cool dude. You should talk to him sometime. And he like, wait, what? He's already a manager. He's like, yeah, he spoke to me yesterday when we was at the studio. So I said, oh, well. You know, paper boy, you snooze, you lose. So, you know, nonetheless, he's seeing damn Yodel boy all messed up and Benny done left him. So he's like, you know, I could give you a ride. He was like, are you sure you're going to be OK? You're not going to get sick. Like if you need to throw up, throw up before we get by my damn car. OK. Or before you get in my car, he keep asking if he OK. And Yodel boy keep talking about some. Yeah, he about that life. I said, child, you don't even know what the heck life is. OK, sit your loo behind there. But, you know, he tells him to hurry up and um come on or whatever the case may be, right? And get in the car and that he's going to give him a ride. So I'm like, okay, I'm assuming that he's going to become Yellow Boy's manager since that's probably the only person that is, <laughs> you know, left at this point. So... You know, we basically then get, you know, Earn at this point. Earn is over here meditating. He over here done stripped off, you know, his shirt, his jacket or whatever the case may be. He's sitting down on the floor and he's saying, you know, who is D'Angelo, right? Who is D'Angelo? We are D'Angelo. You know, um, what is D'Angelo? And he's saying that he wants to experience D'Angelo. So slowly but surely, it seems like he's starting to get the guy's attention as he's saying this, okay? And he's starting to breathe in, breathe out, right? Relax, relate, release, and woo and get into a whole nother different world right now and so when he says this you know the guy like i said starts to pay attention to what he's saying and what he's doing and he go ahead and open up this daggone door okay they look like the damn thing that they put people in to cremate them at first child it was just like a little door that he literally had to like you know crawl in or whatever the case may be crawl through to get to the other side right looked like it was a part of the wall but then he opened it and so you know, Earn goes through that, and when he comes out on the other side, you just see in the back of this guy, you don't know who it is. At first, I'm like, well, what is D'Angelo? I'm getting confused now, right? Because I thought we was talking about the singer D'Angelo, but after a while, I wasn't too sure. So when he gets inside this room, the guy sitting there, all we see is the back of him that he got braids. He looked like he playing some kind of game on the TV. He get up from there and he over here singing, how can you mend? That's my song. A broken man. Mm -hmm. Right. And he all singing along with Al Green or whatever the case may be, getting up and making him a sandwich. Now he takes one little piece off the top of the chicken, honey. And put that on, I think it was peanut butter. I said, okay, what are we doing here? You lost me a little bit. All right, I could have understood if you would have been putting some hot sauce up on top of there. But we putting this on peanut butter, you know, and he throws the rest of the chicken back in the bowl. He just put that top part. Now, I will say the chicken was looking crispy, okay? It was looking crispy. So, you know, the way he's singing and all that, I'm at first about to be like, all right, now, sing it, D'Angelo, okay? Sing it, right? I'm like, do they really have D'Angelo here? Do he put on more weight? What's going on? But when he turns around and obviously Ernest thinking that this is D'Angelo too, you know, he walking, he all out of breath, he tired, you know, looking all type of disgruntled at this point. And he's taking his time to make this sandwich and pr pretty much just getting all into the song, singing along with the record or whatever. And when he finally finished and he turned around, it's like, oh, no, wait, this not D'Angelo. But if I'm not mistaken, that is D'Angelo's and Angie Stone's son, okay? And so he basically turns around and... You know, Ern is just like, you not D'Angelo, okay? He's like, yeah, no, I'm not, okay? And, you know, he basically was saying to him, speak. 
And so Earn is looking like, I know I didn't go through all of this for nothing. Y'all got to be freaking kidding me. He said, you asked for the D'Angelo experience and this is the D'Angelo experience. Okay. In this moment, we are all D'Angelo for you. And so Earn is like, wow, seriously. He was like, I really needed to speak to him. He says, I've been here for four days. I said, not four days. You know, he said, I thought that this was something where, you know, maybe he wanted to test the patients and see how patient the manager would be or whatever. And then he could come in and he could talk to D'Angelo. He says, you know, I really need to speak to him. So he says, well, a lot of these people are unworthy of D'Angelo's, you know, um, presence or whatever. Right. And he says, do you know who D'Angelo is? And again, Ern is just looking real frustrated. And he says, do you want to learn about who he is? And Ern says, sure, sure. Okay. And he go ahead and he sit down. And so the guy sit down too. In the meantime, he's smacking on back on this damn sandwich. And he says, you know, this is a complex D'Angelo network. All right. They have men and women all spread across the country that are all a part of it. I say, okay. So... He basically was telling him, like, you know, everybody plays their role in it or whatever the case may be, right? And you have proven yourself worthy. And he spread this damn peanut butter on top of Earn forehead, y'all, and said, now you are the protector. I said, protector of what? You know, and the fact that Earn was able to stay so calm while he did all of this, it was like, woo, bless you, Earn, okay? Earn just sat back and was like, I'm tired. I'm tired. Okay. So he says, you know, if I don't come back with the real D'Angelo, I'm going to really be in some real mess. Okay. I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. And the guy was like, hmm, you know, I understand. So he basically, you know, was saying to him that, you know, he says, yes, yes, yes. He starts to tell him about this daggone dream that he used to have. Okay. He says, since he was eight years old, that Ern used to have this dream that he was swimming. All right. And that these arms would be reaching out to him and trying to grab him. And he basically was like, you know, you keep struggling to keep yourself away from them to the fact that you keep falling down to try to fight to stay free. And he says, why are you so certain that these arms that are reaching for you are trying to harm you? So I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Is he getting through to something? Does Earn know what he's talking about? Is this a dream that Earn be having? So Earn basically <laughs> just was like, uh, starts getting up and was like, OK, thank you. Thank you very much. And he's like, you know, no problem. So he's asking Ern as he walks away or whatever, like protector. He basically was like, you know, this whole operation is rather expensive or whatever the case may be. Right. Can you just let me know? Did you really want to sign me? And so he says, yeah, but no, I can't. You know, I need a D'Angelo. Sorry. Right. But you did sound good, though. And so he's standing there talking about, oh, OK, thank you. He was like, oh. I sounded good. I sounded good, right? So I said, okay, only Atlanta, right? And so basically we end up seeing that, you know, Bunk is at the Grammys, Paperboy done made it to the daggone Grammys, and the guy that was giving the speech in the front of the class is at the Grammys, okay? I think his name was Cassidy. So they like saying, oh, well, you know, are you nominated, Paperboy? And he like, no, nah, I'm not nominated because they all saying who they got and how much, you know, this is for them and how they, they big time because they here at the Grammys. So they said, well, who are you here with then if you ain't getting nominated? And he says, oh, well, I signed. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yodel Boy. And they'm like, wait, you the one that got him? They like, oh, shoot, you kidding me? They was like, you know, how the heck you got in so fast or whatever the case may be. That song is not even like 17 days old or some shit like that. And you basically was able to make it to the top and get all these plays on it, have it on the radio, have it streaming. And less than three weeks and went platinum. They was like, you had to have paid for that, right? And so... Um, Paperboy was like, listen, don't we all? And they all start laughing or whatever, right? So obviously this has now worked out for Paperboy with him coming on with little Yoda boy, okay? And so they saying that they gonna, you know, get up with each other later. And Paperboy goes over to Benny and was like, yo, I've been trying to get at Yoda boy all day. Have you heard anything from him? And he's like, yeah, man, as a matter of fact, you know, I hate to be the one to tell you, but Yoda boy is dead. He like dead. What the heck are you talking about? He's like, yeah, his driver went to pick him earlier, up earlier today, and they found him dead in the damn house, okay? He had od He like, what? He was like, yeah, stranded on social media now. So he was like, it's like crazy. So he said, let me see that, you know? And he starts looking, and people are saying, 
you know, R.I.P. and lost the legend, you know what I'm saying? He's like, what the? He was like, he died. He was like, you can't be serious. And he's like, yeah. So he was like, well, you're probably going to win that Grammy anyway, though, right? And so basically he goes walking away and Paperboy is just standing there stunned, shocked, you know what I'm saying, in complete disbelief. And the winner is, you know what I'm saying, um, Yodel Boy, Born to Die, of all things, that was the name of his album and that is the name of the episode. He does win it. And, you know, I guess this was some type of family member, friend or whatever that comes up to accept the award and is basically saying that they're so thankful to everyone and that basically, you know, his music been playing all day and that this is what he would have always wanted. Right. And he really did it. He's a legend. And so you got, um, you know, Paperboy Earn and <laughs> Paperboy Earn and Darius in this booth in the bar watching it on the TV. OK, he done left from there. And they just saying like, yeah, this is super weird, right? And they like, at least you did win. Of course, Paperboy ain't in no damn mood to celebrate or whatever. And he's saying that being a manager is not what he thought it was, right? Because they, you know, Ernest telling him congrats. And he was like, I don't know, man. He was like, I don't think I'm cut out for this. I don't think I could do this part. He said it made me feel sick. And then Ern is like, yeah, like, okay, welcome to my world right now. You know how I feel sometimes. And Al is basically asking him, like, how do you do it, man? And basically, Ern is just like, um, he is like, man, listen, I just remember it's not about what I feel. It's about, you know what I'm saying, um, what survives, you know? And so Paperboy just looking and he just like, you know, kind of marinating and thinking about that. And then, you know, Ern says he has another meeting on the West Side. So he will go ahead and talk to them later, you know, not too long afterwards. Um, Darius start to say it's some type of after party and, you know, at Mickey Boston's or whatever. And he's basically asking, you know, Paperboy, is he coming? And he like, nah, I'm good. And like at this point, I think Paperboy done had enough excitement. And, you know, Darius looks a little worried about him at that point. But he like, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. And so basically it just goes off with him there sitting at the booth. So what y'all think, y'all? Because I was kind of feeling at one point like Paperboy was tired of being the whole rapper thing, right? But then this made it seem like he still was here for it. But he was seeing that times is changing and that now they may be looking at him, you know, kind of out with the old and with the new thing. And would he be able to move on to do, you know, what I'm saying management and, and really getting to see from the other side of what Earn had to go through at times being, you know, his manager. So it was kind of a full circle moment. But that basically was the episode. Y'all y'all tell me what y'all thought about this episode. OK, put it in the comments. Let's discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. All right, y'all. Till next time. Tula.